Inside Texas Politics, 3rd edition by Brandon Roddinghouse, Chapter 11, Part 1, Criminal Justice. Noticing the broken lock off duty, Dallas police officer Amber Grigger swung the door open and stepped into an apartment she believed was hers. Still in uniform, she confronted a strange man. Unarmed 26-year-old Botham Jean, sitting on the couch, eating ice cream and watching television in white shorts. Reacting quickly, she shot Jean in the heart before realizing that she was on the floor above her own apartment and that Jean was not a burglar. Grieger was subsequently fired from the Dallas Police Department and sentenced to 10 years in prison for murder. The jury found that she had acted unreasonably by failing to notice clear signals the apartment was not hers, such as the door, red, the red doormat outside. She did not follow proper po police procedures to retreat if her life was not in danger, and she, had, she did not attempt to administer CPR. Grieger's defense argued that she was blurry after a 14-hour shift and had no malice towards Jean, having never met him, and made an innocent but grave mistake of fact. A legal term used by police defense when an officer reasonably believed he or she saw something like a weapon even if it, one was not present. <clears throat> During the 911 call, Grieger texted her police partner, Martin Riviera, twice, I need you, hurry up and I explicitive up. Grieger testified that it was fear, not racism, that led her to pull the trigger. However, the prosecution introduced other text messages in which Grieger joked about Martin Luther King Jr.'s death and mocked her black colleagues. Some felt the 10 year sentence was a slap in, just a slap in the face. <clears throat> Several high-profile high shootings by police officers or at police officers have heightened tensions across the racial ideological divide. The assault, the, the assault arrest and suicide of Sandra Bland in Waller County Jail in 2015 following a traffic stop. The murder of five police officers in Dallas during a protest against police violence in 2016. The fatal shooting of an unarmed black high school freshman, Jordan Edwards, by a white former black Balch Springs, Texas police officer in 2017. The shooting of Atishina Jefferson in 2019 in her Fort Worth home during a routine welfare check and the death in police custody by George Floyd a Houston native in Minneapolis, Minnesota in 2020, which sparked protests all over Texas and the nation. Criminal justice in Texas occurs at the tense intersection of politics, personal freedom, and concerns about law and order. The authority granted to the state by the U.S. Constitution to investigate criminal violent violations and punish those convicted places it in the center of controversy. In this chapter, was, we examine the strain between maintaining law and order and using a fair and bias-free approach to these issues. We start by exploring the norms and laws surrounding crime and punishment in Texas. We next paint a picture of the state's criminal justice process, incarceration, and other types of punishment and the obstacles felons face upon release from prison. In the final section, we re examine reforms put in place to remedy flaws in the system. 11.1 .1 Texan Justice. Political columnist, columnist Molly Irvins remarked that a favorite thing of Texas politicians is to get tough on crime. It's a historical legacy that runs deep Texas Rangers, the state oldest law enforcement agency, 
traces its roots back to Stephen F. Austin's call for a league to defend the Texas frontier against attacks by Native Americans in 1823. In the days of the Wild West, Judge Roy Bean, a saloon keeper and justice of the peace in the dusty town of Langtree along the Rio Grande was said to have fined a corpse $40 for carrying concealed weapons. Texans generally revered their law enforcement officer, believing them to be a critical front line of defense against crime. However, racial groups divide no opinions of law enforcement. Some racial groups are more likely than others to have a negative view of police. Driven by personal interactions, the ex exasperated by high profile incidences. Incidents. See figure 11.1. .1. Texans also vary the, in the, their attitudes towards victims and those accused of crime. And so they battle over the victim, over victims' rights and the rights of the accused. Rights of the accused. Cases involving police shootings raise Questions about how the rights of an accused are violated. Accused individuals are for, informed by law enforcement agents. Just as they are in tele, every television police show that they have the right to remain silent, to consult with an attorney, and to have that attorney present. When being questioned, police officers are required to have probable cause to question a suspect. This requirement ensures that... The accused is protected from an unreasonable search and seizure. The Texas Indigenous Defense Commission works with the counties to provide lawyers for indigenous defendants, those who cannot afford a lawyer. Most of these rights of the accused are guaranteed by both the U.S. Constitution and the Texas Constitution. Texas has tripled the funding for indigenous defense cases since 2001, but still remain, ranks low on per capita defense spending, overloading the number of cases for defense lawyers, defense attorneys by double or triple the recommended caseload. <clears throat> Excuse me. Victim rights. The Texas Constitution guarantees several rights to crime victims and their families. Victims crimes of crimes such as sexual assault, kidnapping, aggravated robbery, or other criminal bodily harm are entitled to protection by law enforcement, have the right to be informed about the progress of a case at various points, and also have the right to have their court, the court take their safety into account. When considering release of their attacker from a correctional facility, the legislator also created the Crime Victims Compensation Act to provide funds to victims for loss of property, personal injury, or death. 11.2. As described in Chapter 10, felonies are more serious offenses that elicit harsher punishments than misdemeanors. There are three classes of misdemeanors and five types of felonies in Texas, each associated with a range of penalties. Misdemeanors. As Table 11.1 illustrates, misdemeanors can range from Class A, the most severe, to Class C, the, most, the least severe. The most common Class C misdemeanor is a traffic offense, speeding. Other Class C misdemeanors are minor theft, usually shoplifting, a minor in possession of alcohol, or leaving a child unattended in a vehicle. In 2015, Houston Rocket, Rockets point guard Patrick Beverly was arrested on a Class C misdemeanor warrant for an outstanding unpaid toll, which he attributed to an expired Easy Tag account. He was taken to a police subst substation and paid the 330 $321 fine on his warrant. Although late to practice, Beverly played in the game that evening. Penalties increase for repeat offenders. For example, the most common misdemeanor in Texas is driving while intoxicated, a DWI. The first conviction is a Class B 
misdemeanor punishable by up to six months in jail or a $2,000 fine. And a second offense, or if the defendant's blood alcohol level is greater than 0 0.15 and is considered a Class A misdemeanor. Felonies. Felonies in Texas range from fail failure to pay child support to murder. And their punishable <clears throat> punishment varies from short prison sentences to death by lethal injection. The circumstances of the crime also play a part in sentencing. If a defendant is convicted of a state jail felony, a judge can bump up the punishment to a third degree felony. If the defendant used or exhibited a deadly weapon during the crime or had been convicted of a felony in the past. Although Texans have a reputation for being tougher than rawhide on crime and criminals, the criminal justice system and the public at times do have a soft spot for some offenders. Bernie Teed, a 38-year-old mortician, befriended the gruff, wealthy 81-year-old widow Marjorie Nugent, and the two became close companions, living, traveling, and shopping together. After Nugent's disappearance, T continued to spend the widow's considerable fortune, giving much of it away as charitable contributions in the community. After months of questions about Nugent's whereabouts, police eventually discovered her body in, in a freezer in the garage hidden under frozen food. Although a cruel act, the town was sympathetic to the soft-spoken and well-liked Teed. From the day that the deep freeze was open, you haven't been able to sorry, find anyone in town saying poor Mrs. Nugent and city councilman Olin Joffreen. People are here are saying poor Benny. Teed was sentenced to life in prison in 2016. Drug crimes. Drug offenses are based on the type of and amount of drug in question, how the drug was concealed, and whether the defendant manufactured, delivered, or possessed the drug. Since 1999, arrests for drug crimes have skyrocketed, although most arrests are for possession rather than distribution. Even trace amounts of drugs, one one hundredth of the amount, uh, amount of a packet of Splenda, can lead to prosecution often as a way to meet political conviction goal for prosecutors. In a famous example, Willie Nelson was traveling on Honeysuckle Rose, his tour bus in Hudspeth County. The road was on a border checkpoint and the border patrol agent stopped the bus and searched, searched it. The agents found enough marijuana to charge the Texans, Texas icon with a class B misdemeanor. Hudspeth County Attorney C.R. Kitt Bramblett joked that the legendary country artist played his 1975 hit Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain in the courtroom as a community service. The judge ultimately fined him $500. Some local district attorneys in Texas are de decriminalizing small amounts of marijuana which they argue saves money and is good public policy. Critics charge these districts, district attorneys with creating sanctuary cities for drugs. Juvenile crime. The Texas Juvenile Justice Department is responsible for the supervision and rehabilitation of juveniles, 10 to 16 years old. In the criminal justice system at age 17, a defendant may be tried as an adult and Texas is one of only four states to do so. Studies show that 90% of juvenile justice system kids have experienced trauma through confinement or inability to pay fines. In 2019, legislators from both parties, with the support of Texas Criminal Justice Coalition, introduced bills to raise the age but no, to no avail. Although high-profile cases such as the murder of a San Antonio boxer, Juan, Duan, Juan Duane, or John Dwayne Van Meter, by a 12-year-old, bring home the seriousness of the harm juveniles can do. 
approximately 95% of juvenile offenses are drug related. Juvenile justice is administered locally with the hearings, terms of detention and probation determined at the county level. The state has established different procedures for police interrogations and confessions and juveniles also have separate case managers, detention facilities, courts for some offenses and punishments. Juveniles may be dis designated to a first offender program as an alternative to jail or to programs for substance abuse, life skills, parenting, or animal therapy. Juveniles are not alone. In this process, they are entitled to a lawyer and if a parent or guardian cannot be located, a guardian ad litem is appointed. Once sentenced, however, these offenders are transferred to adult facilities at the age of 19. More than 2,000 of these offenders are currently serving time in adult prisons for crimes they committed as juveniles. 11.3 Criminal Justice Process in Texas Texans look at look to state and municipal governments as to handle criminal justice. And the state has created a bureau, bureaucracy to administer justice before, during, and after the trial. Let's take a look at the specifics of each. Pre-trial. So you've been arrested on charges that you violated the law. What's next? The first step is an appearance before a judge. Within 48 hours after an arrest, a suspect must have a hearing before a judge to be informed of the charges. The judge must also advise the accused that he or she can retain counsel, remain silent, and have an attorney present during, the, during interviews with law enforcement officers or attorneys represent the state. To get out of jail, the accused needs to post bail. Bail is a contract whereby the accused agrees to pay to, to give something up, usually money, to ensure that he or she will appear when the court so orders. After a specific bail amount is set, a bond can be acquired to facilitate the bail. A bond can be cashed, be a cash bond in which the defendant pays the full amount of the bond immediately. A bail bond in which the defendant uses a bonding company to borrow the collateral or personal recognizance in which a defendant is not required to pay up anything. When defendants use a bonds person to secure bail, they pay a fee 10% of, of the set bail amount and pledge collateral, usually property or automobiles for the remaining amount. If the defendant doesn't show up for court, the bonds person must either pay the entire amount or finally produce the defendant. If the accused is not in custody, the prosecutor, the state lawyers, who is responsible for bringing charges against the accused lawbreaker, has up to two years from the date of the offense to file misdemeanor charges and between five and 10 years to file felony charges. Prosecutors have different titles depending on where they work. Both district and county attorneys represent the state in criminal cases and work with law enforcement to investigate criminal cases in, the jur in their jurisdiction. Once the prosecutor files the charges, the accused must make an initial appearance or arraignment. The charges are read in open court and the defendant enters a plea. A grand jury in conjunction with the prosecutor determines whether there is sufficient evidence to bring the criminal charges in serious cases against a defendant. The prosecutor presents evidence in the form of physical items such as alleged murder weapons and witnesses. These meetings are not public and so they protect the reputation of the defendant and allow witnesses to speak freely without fear of retaliation. Less serious felony charges can be brought in other ways, usually by a charging document. If the defendant wants to argue that law enforcement engaged an improper search, seizure or statement, he or she engages in a suppression hearing. 
to ask the judge to suppress the evidence by claiming it was collected illegally. Both sides in the case also take discovery, a process of collecting information period during this period or during this period. Texas does not have an automatic discovery, so the defendant's lawyer must request that the prosecution disclose specific items such as a witness as witness statements, audio or video of the evidence, and physical objects such as firearms or drugs. The accused may also plead guilty to reduce charges through a plea bargain in which the defendant waives his or her right to a trial and the prosecutor re recommends a punishment that the judge accepts or rejects. Almost all criminal cases are finalized with plea, gar plea bargain. Trial. If the case doesn't end in a plea, it will likely go to trial. For jury trials, a jury must be selected through voir dire, dire, a French term meaning to see, to speak. During a voir dire, jurors are questioned by attorneys and judges in court to determine if a potential juror is biased, cannot deal with the issues fairly, or knows a party to the case. Some jurors may be dismissed for a legal reason, such as knowing the defendant. Other jurors may be dismissed through a preemptory challenge by one of the attorneys because of a perceived bias against the defendant, predispositions about the crime or other reasons. A defendant <clears throat> must enter a plea in response to the charges. The plea can be guilty, not guilty, or no contest. In the last name plea, the defendant does not admit guilt, but is not contesting to underline the underlining facts. The contest, no contest pleas allow the defendant to accept punishment from the court, but avoid admitting guilt. The defendant who does not plead to the charge can request a trial with six jurors in misdemeanor cases and 12 jurors in felony trials. If a defendant wants a trial but waives his or her right to a jury trial, and if the state agrees, the defendant can receive a bench trial. Misdemeanor defendants who are found guilty usually are sentenced by the judge immediately. In felony cases, judges consider facts, factors such as the nature of the crime, remorse expressed by the defendant, the defendant's criminal history and personal circumstances and the wishes of the victim. Sentencing could jail pro probation fines, restitution, and community service. Punishment. In the 1840s, the crim criminal justice of apparatus in the Republic of Texas was an in ineffective by almost any standard. Many residents of the early ramshackle Texas towns, now be beaming silvery metropolises, were shiftless, rowdy, and sometimes vicious loafers who had to be corralled by corrupt sheriffs into musty jails. In 1842, the legislators seeking to some control over the system voted to provide <clears throat> excuse me, funds for the construction of a state penitentiary to improve local law and order. Over the years then, the correction system has adopted new solutions and adapted new to new trends, sparked by a, a mixture of state-based experimentation, evolving political values, and civil rights concerned concerns. Physical labor. Originally, pris prisons were largely expected to be self-sufficient by growing or manufacturing items to generate revenue. They relied on the physical labor of convicts to generate revenue. Even the state capitol was built in part by 300 convicts from local prisons who earned 65 cents per day for breaking boulders of almost me metallic density. Prisoners produced millions of pounds of cast iron works, including the dome and ornamentation for the inside of the capitol building, much of, <clears throat> excuse me, much of which still stands today. 
Currently, young first-time offenders are sometimes sentenced to a type of boot camp. Modeled after the military's basic training, a sentencing sometimes called shock probation in addition in adult prison. Some of the convicted work on host squads where they plant and pick, uh, produce, carry rocks. Pick, produce, and carry rocks. <laughs> probation community supervision or probation is an alternative to incarceration that allows offenders to live and work outside of prison while they serve their sentence. The basic conditions require the defendants to commit no criminal offense while on probation, report to a supervising officer periodically, maintain employment to support dependents, and pay restitution to victims. Maximum periods are set to at 10 years for a felony conviction and two years for a misdemeanor case. The length of supervision depends on the offense, the use of a deadly weapon, and prior convictions. A judge can assign additional supervision for 10 years if the case involves indecency with a child, sexual assault, or aggravated assault. Texas ranks comparatively high nationwide, number seven, in 2018 on the state lists of defendants in community supervision. See figure 11.2. Other forms of community supervision allow flexibility in treating defendants in deferred adjudication. Community supervision. A defendant pleads guilty, but the judge delays a final verdict until the time the defendant successfully completes the supervision period. If the conditions are met, the judge dismisses the proceedings and discharges the defendant. If the defendant violates a condition, however, the defendant may not appeal and the punishment for the verdict will stand. Community service can be a condition of probation. The service can range from picking up trash to volunteering for the society for the prevention of cruelty to animals to providing skilled labor at a construction site. <clears throat> Incarceration. Local, state, and federal governments maintain correctional facilities in Texas municipal city, city jails. Hold the, those arrested until either a bail is made or they transferred to county jails. County jails hold defendants awaiting trial to transfer to prison. Community correctional facilities such as boot camps or substance abuse treatment facilities. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice oversees more than 100 state facilities or various types, including transfer facilities, state jail facilities, psychiatric units, and private prisons. Federal penitentiaries house convicts who have violated federal law. There are 106 correctional facilities in Texas, including federal correctional institutions, private correctional institutions, and residential reentry centers, halfway houses, to provide assistance to inmate nearing release. It costs the states approximately $62.34 a day to incarcerate an adult inmate and $479.56 to incarcerate a juvenile inmate. Overcrowding. During the 1980s, Texas and the nation as a whole experienced a sharp spike in crime rate by 1991. Texas significantly outpaced the nation in crimes committed with the murder rate 56% higher than the national average, rape 26% higher, aggravated assault 19%, and burglary 44%. From the 1980s to the 1990s, dangerous youth crime nearly doubled, while crimes committed by adults rose 25%. Prison populations exploded in the 1980s as the U.S. Congress and state legislators passed to pass tough on crime legislation to appeal to a growing con conservative voter base and to stem rising crime rates. See figure 11.3. The overcrowding in Texas prisons instigated 
a seemingly unending series of lawsuits involving Texas prisoners and the federal government and the Texas Department of Corrections. Following federal co court mandates to end prison overcrowding and, and Texans concerns about the rising crime rates in the 1990s, the state nearly tripled the number of prison beds in that decade to 150,000. One criminal justice observer noted that the ramping up was like mobilizing for a world war rather than significantly reducing overcrowding. However, the incarceration rate shot up. Texas became an icon for states that wanted to get tough on crime. State court judges began handing out longer sentences for criminal defendants State laws were passed that mandated convicts to serve a minimum of 50% of their sentence. The prison population ballooned from 290 <coughs> excuse me, prisoners to 100,000 in 1990 to 704 prisoners per 100,000 in 1999. In addition, the average sentence served in prison tripled for violent crimes and burglary between 1991 and 1999. And the number of prisoners paroled decreased by 60% during this time period. Punitive sentences targeted defendants who were disproportionately racial minorities. See figure 11.4. Several states copied elements of what prison experts called Texas Control Model, which emphasized inmate obedience, discipline, work, and education. Roughly in that order, politicians who believed longer sentences were best for rehabilitation took credit for getting tough on crime. Recent fall in crime rate and incarceration. The prison population in Texas has slowly declined during the 21st century partially driven by a falling crime rate, which fell just as quickly as it rose during the 1990s. Between 1994 and 2000, arrests for murder dropped 68% and arrests for robbery declined 51%. Criminologists attribute the decline in crime to a strong economy, a shrinking market for drugs, new police strategies involving community policing, and efforts to keep guns out of the hands of juveniles. Even so, Texas spending on prison and jails is the highest in the nation, growing five times faster than the state spending on public schools over the past three decades. Drug court reform. Funding has been an issue as well. Republicans, while tough on crime, are also fiscally conservative and prisons are expensive to maintain and run. Spending on incarceration increased by 205% during the 1990s. Texas Republicans also responded to establishing, by establishing drug courts pr to provide treatment for the drug addicted of offenders rather than prison time. In addition, they diverted funds from prison construction to alternative approaches. Governor Rick Perry signed legislation to allow police officers to issue citation for misdemeanor possession of marijuana in place of arrest. He also supported legislation that man mandated probation for the first time drug offenders who were caught with small amounts of drugs. The state poured significant funds into drug prevention programs and probation programs as a result, the state closed three prisons from 2000 to 2010. The public supports reasonable measure, measures that reduce incarceration rates. Pulling from the Texas Public Policy Foundation, a conservative leaning the think tank in Austin found that most Texas voters favor making penalties make proportionate to the crime 61% support drug treatment over prison, 57% support raising the standard for a drug felony, and 57% support community supervision over prison for some crimes. Pre-visitation. Pre-visitation of prisons whereby maintenance of prison facility out is outsourced to a private firm's saves money, but also creates controversy. 
In 2015, some 2,800 inmates rioted by starting fires and taking control of the privately owned Willacy County Correctional Center in Raymondville. Their purpose, protesting the rough conditions of the prison as imposed by the Utah-based company operating the facility, including insect infestation, exposure to raw sewage, substantial, substandard medical care, and excessive solitary confinement. U.S. Bureau of Prisons canceled the contract, the prison closed, and the inmates were transferred. Private prisons were filling up to capacity, however, and Texas is building new facilities such as the one in Conroe as federal government cracks down on undocumented immigrants. Texas private in prisons hold about one third of immigration and customs enforcement, IECE, detainees. The death penalty. <coughs> Excuse me. Texas has a long history of issuing and implementing the death penalty for capital offenders. Prior to 1923, the individual counties were responsible for executing their own prisoners after 1924. Fears of, an, the, of overzealous sheriffs in conjunction with alleged abuse by county jails, juries, led to the legislator to mandate that all prison, prisoner executions be carried out by the state at the walls unit, named because of the tall walls surrounding the unit. In Huntsville, Texas carried out executions by hanging from 1819 to 1923, and through electrocution from 1924 on Old Sparky, as the electric chair was familiarly known, was constructed by inmates out of an oak chair. The chair was the means of executing 361 men between February 1924 and July of 1964. Texas temporarily stopped executing prisoners after the U.S. Supreme Court banned capital punishment in the United States as a violation of the Eighth Amendment, cruel and unusual prohibition. In the case Furman versus Georgia in 1972, <clears throat> once the death penalty was again permitted by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1977, Texas adopted the practice of lethal injection. Carrying out the first such execution in 1982, <laughs> Tough-talking Governor Ann Richards approved 50 executions in her term as governor. On the campaign trail in 1994, Richards, a Democrat, bragged about being as tough on crime as any Republican gubernatorial candidate. George W. Bush responded that if elected, he would shorten the time spent on death row appeals. The Houston Chronicle scolded them both in an editorial it is unseemingly for political candidates to compete with one another over who would be the most enthusiastic and cheerful executioner. After winning the election, Governor Bush signed off on 135 executions after approving legislation that expedited execution and limited capital appeals. We're a death penalty, he stated. He declared, Governor Rick Perry sanctioned more execution than any modern governor in U.S. history and was stingy with pardons. Despite talking, though, tough, the governor also supported legislation to allow juries in capital murder trials to consider life without parole instead of death, which has greatly decreased the number of people sentenced to death. The legislation signed in 2005, dropped the number of execu executions from 37 to 9 in slightly more than a decade. See figure 11.5. Several crimes in Texas are eligible for the death penalty. These include hiring some murder to, someone to murder someone else, murdering a judge or a correctional officer, and murder committed during the act of specified felonies such as kidnapping, burglary, and rape. When considering whether or not to apply death sentence, a jury may weigh the circumstances of the crime and whether a defendant demonstrated remorse about the crime. 
unanimous agreement that a defendant is likely to commit future criminal acts is required to sentence an offender to death. Race is a significant factor in application of death penalty. For instance, between December 2004 and, Decem and 2016, every death sentence handed down in Harris County was to an African American or Hispanic man. The current membership on death row is 44% African American, 26% Hispanic, and 27% Anglo. The rate of prosecutors asking for the death penalty has slowed due to concern over racial and mental health issues raised by cases recently reviewed by a, the U.S. Supreme Court. Texas has reached historic lows in the number of individuals on death row. The first case under court review involved baby Bobby Moore, who, was, who shot a 73 three-year-old James McCarble in the head at point-blank range while robbing the Birch, Birdsall supermarket with two others in 1980. Moore's lawyers claimed that he had profound mental and social difficulty from a young age and was unable to spell, tell time, or understand the days of the week. At age 14, Moore's father threw him out of the house for being too dumb to stay at home. Lawyers for the state of Texas argued that Moore's IQ test scores in the upper 70s were not evidence of mental deficiency, especially since he was able to show leadership, hold a job by mowing lots, lie, act rationally, and respond to stimuli. All of this, all the standards used in a prior case by Texas Criminal Court Appeals in 2016, however, the U.S. Supreme Court held that since Moore had a mild disability, executing him would be a violation of the Eighth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution's prohibition on cruel and unusual punishment. In 2017, the court additionally held that Texas process for determining whether a convicted murder was a future danger was racially tainted because experts testify testified that African Americans were more prone to violence. In 1999, death row was moved to a modern unit called the Polunsky Unit. Deep in the lonely pine, piney woods near Livingston, Texas today, Texas relies on lethal injection to carry out death sentences. Many lethal injection drugs, however, are in short supply. So the state relies on a single drug, pento barbitual, a drug used in animal euthanasia. The scarcity of this drug prompted more than 3,300 citizens to write Governor Abbott between the January and September of 2015 to suggest alternative means to swiftly carry out the death penalty. The public's creative methods include, included blood draining, carbon monoxide poisoning, and a firing squad. Support for the use of, of the death penalty for capital cases as is high in Texas. In a 2015 survey, 75% of respondents favor the death penalty as a sentence in capital cases, compared to 19% who did not support it and 6% who were not sure. In a national 2017 survey, only 55% supported use of the death penalty, a, law, a low not seen since 1972. In Texas, however, even liberals who have been class, classically opposed to the death penalty are split on, it beca on its use because generally they lean toward not supporting it. See Table 11.2. This is the end of Chapter 11, Part 1.